you can see it in the sky, this nice overcast kind of gray sky. Winter is on its way. That's right, it's gonna be a whopping, I don't know, maybe 55 at my house towards the end of this week. We're supposed to get a cold front coming through, some bright sunshine for the weekend. Maybe just in time to go out for a little boat ride or something fun and maybe do a little diving. Maybe we'll catch some jellyfish. We have Ollie here on patrol doing his normal day. What do you think, buddy? And today, working on building a new 8020 stand, which is basically a shelving stand that's gonna go up against the wall at the big project over there on the West Coast. That project is really, you know, refined up now, actually working super well. The cylindrical reef aquarium is growing in very nicely. Matter of fact, we removed the first coralline algae spots. And then I gave Buddy a little drawing of um, stand. It's basically gonna be six feet long by only 12 inches wide. It goes along a wall and it's gonna be about 53 inches tall or so. It's gonna have some adjustable feet on there to level it out up against the wall. And um, yeah, we just do this kind of stuff in house. We have this whole stack of 8020 still in stock. We determined to do it out of the gray colored 8020. You gotta have precise cuts. You gotta be super careful with it as you do it. Aluminum is a very light metal per se, it's not super hard. You can cut it with a high quality chop saw blade there. He's also making a couple reactors. We had some tubes left over from Next Reef. This is a new, a small reactor to put some GFO in. Because we had some of these tubes and I want to use the material. And then this triple stack unit here with the three different sizes. If you remember, this came from my Kalkwasser reactor that I made before. The tubes we drilled through ended up getting small cracks there with the uni seals on them. So they're actually dripping on the 1680 reef upstairs. So Buddy made some brand new ones with thicker acrylic here that's glued together. So he's gonna finish these off and then we're gonna put penetrations through the floor on the flat surface with bulkheads. So that's going to hold the same exact footprint, but just as much water as before, maybe a little bit more, but it's gonna be a little bit nicer when he installs that next week. Let's just talk a little bit about, you know, setting up this new aquarium and going through the livestock that we added to those aquariums as the aquarium matures. So let's go inside. There's a few more fish that I'm gonna to try to put in this week. Right up here is the Bimaculatus anthias, the twin spot anthias. There's about a 12 pack of them right up there. The Bimax would be a great addition to the aquarium now. We've got the pyramid butterfly over here, or Zoster's butterfly, the yellow and white. He's super nice. That would be a really great addition into the aquarium. We already have some yellow tangs. I see some zebra gobies inside there. That might be another good fish to add. And I saw a really nice powder blue tang that we can start to put into the aquarium too. So one of the more challenging aspects of setting up brand new reef aquariums, even with this Billy big cylinder that we built over on the West Coast is just the patience that it takes to really recognize how establishing the biology in the aquarium and establishing some coralline algae growth and cycling the aquarium through in a reasonably rapid fashion. We have lots of examples. We have a 600 gallon room divider in Fort Lauderdale that was just put in like this aquarium, you know, all the white rocks in there. And then boom, you know, a couple years get into it. Well, even six months, but a year gets into it, two years, three years, almost four years now, this reef is growing in and just 
overgrown. So we continue to keep harvesting corals out to get too close to the glass. It just takes a lot of patience. The idea of a long-term successful coral reef aquarium really comes back into the foundation of the aquarium itself as a box holding water. Then this really thorough filtration system, which could be a remote room, it could be a room adjacent, it could be all the filtration underneath and on the sides of the aquarium. It could be a room located downstairs in the basement of a house. Those aspects are super important to recognize because that really is the engine behind the aquarium. So, you know, you open up the boot of a, a Porsche, the engine's typically in the back, and um, you look underneath and you're like, wow, you know, look at this engine. You have no idea how to service the thing, but it's a really important part of every significant aquarium that we install. And that is the foundation that creates tremendous results like we have on the 5,000 over here at Fort Lauderdale. Now, after running three years, it's truly stunning how, how the corals are just growing immensely. Joe's been doing most of the diving now and we'll start diving soon here into the aquarium over on the other side of the coast, this 2000 gallon cylinder. And I can't say enough about how exciting it is to build these really fantastic, incredible installations and then to see them come into fruition over time and grow in as a thriving living ecosystem. Remember to like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.